Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Today's video is another one just like last week where you get to guess the horsepower on this engine because this engine is going to be dynoed on Thursday. I don't know what day you're watching this, but today is currently Tuesday. It'll probably get air published on Wednesday. So probably a day after you um, watch this, I'll be dynoing or as you're watching it, maybe depending on when you're watching it is when I'll be dynoing it. This is my sister's motor for those who have been paying attention to the channel. This has actually been put together for quite some time. I've had no time to dyno and I really still don't, but I need to go visit my mother. So, uh, kill two birds with one stone, but I'm going to tell you the combination. I'm going to tell you everything about it. But before I do that, let me go ahead and start off by saying, um, thanks for all the comments on the previous video about the 406 getting dynoed. Um, I don't have an answer yet. I'm getting closer. I think, um, I'm gonna do some more investigation on some stuff and see. But uh, anyway, that's probably a whole different video, but thanks for those that have commented. I appreciate that. Um, here's this engine. So this is a 350 Chevy, and honestly, it's probably something that's way, it's much closer to what most of you are running than what the 406 is. This has very little exotic parts, if any, in it. Um, it's pretty a low budget deal, even though some of you would say, no, it's really expensive. I guess it depends on your interpretation. So let's get started. This is a 350, it's got a two bolt main block, but it does have ARP um, main bolts, not studs, bolts. It's only a two bolt main block. Uh, some would argue that it's not strong enough and it may not be, but this is really is a budget deal. Um, the crank, the whole rotating assembly comes from Eagle. And the only reason why I got that is because it's probably the cheapest rotating assembly kit you can get. So it's got a cast um, steel crankshaft. There are 5144 draws with like an ARP 3 8 cap screw and then um, flat top pistons and they're pressed on and they come pressed on by the way but the pistons are hypertetic flat tops four valve reliefs and they've got 560 force rings so they're um they're not it's it's like a street strip deal really more street than it is strip because those pistons alone are they're hypertetic but they're way heavy a big fat ring package um and they're also down in the hole a little bit too so that's the rotating assembly part of it. It does have a Melling standard volume um, shark tooth oil pump on it, and it does have a champ pan. Now this one's a stock appearing one because it is going to my sister's chassis and she doesn't really care, but it thought it'd be easier. So it's a stock looking pan, but it does have a windage tray and crank scraper in it. Shark tooth standard volume oil pump. As far as the heads go, um, these heads, which I, if you go back and watch some of my older videos, I actually ported these and I just did it for this. Is the heads too big for this engine? Probably, but it's more like an experiment. She really doesn't care what this thing makes, and honestly, neither do I. But here's what they are. These are assault um, heads, and what I've done to them is I cut them to a 208 intake valve, 1600 exhaust valve, and honestly, they flow pretty good. They flow like 315, but they're probably around 212 cc's. I didn't cc them, but judging by the measurements I have from them, they're about 212 cc's. I did mill them down to get the chamber size down to 62 cc's to try to get the compression ratio up, because let's talk about that. The pistons are down in the whole 29,000, so the quench sucks. Ideally, we target for NA between 39 and 41 thousandths quench. It's not that in order for that to happen, your block had to be zero deck, so it's at the top of that piston. Well, it's not. So the piston's down in the hole, 29 thousandths. We have a 41 thousandths head gasket, so way too much quench. Um, could I have fixed it? Yes, but again, this is a budget deal, and she didn't really care how much power made, so it wasn't wasn't a thing to do. Because of that, the compression ratio comes in at 9.9, .9, so pretty low. She's only going to run us on 87 octane. However, we are going to dyno on 91. So, um, yeah, way too much quench. That's for sure going to hurt it itself. The intake manifold, this is a Performer EPS. It's really popular among the circle track guys because they have two choices, the Performer and this one. And this one's better. I'll go ahead and tell you. I did mill down the divider, which I showed before. And the reason for that is because eventually, although not on the dyno, it's going to have the sniper EFI. And to help with the signal across the, I did that. It's also port matched and stuff. Is it the best intake manifold? No. But there's two reasons for using it. One, it's strictly a street car. She'll never take it to the strip. Two, it's a lower height, so it's probably going to fit underneath her hood better. I am probably going to run a one inch spacer on the dyno just to see. And without it, but she probably will have no spacer. So just letting you know. So that intake's not the best, just, just saying. The camshaft is a hydraulic roller. 
and I'll show you the specs in just a minute, but I'll go ahead and tell you, it's a custom one, I spec'd it, and you can say it's wrong all you want, and you probably are right, but my sister had a couple couple things she doesn't want to hear, and this is her quote, I don't want to hear thump, 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 so she wants smooth idle and then at a lower RPM. So this thing's gonna pull about 15 inches of vacuum, probably gonna pull more than that, and it's it's for what she wants and what it is. So it, the cam is totally compromising on as far as power wise goes, but it's kind of what she would need. Um, here's the cam specs. So if you look, uh, let, me, let me just turn the box so it's maybe easier to read. There we go. Here's your cam specs. So the intake duration and stop for the love of God. Stop doing the advertised duration to compare camshafts. No one does that. No, no real person does that. We compare at 50. We don't compare at 20 because those are all over. And that there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. You compare at 50. So it's got a 215 duration and intake, which is pretty small. But the exhaust is 232 and you're like, wow, that's a huge spread. Yep. The idea was that this intake lobe is so small that I wanted to try to at least carry some power. So I added more exhaust uh, lobe. So to try to carry the power longer. The lobe separation is really wide at 112, and you might be like, why did you do that? Again, when you spread the lobe separation, typically it idles better, it's smoother, there's less overlap. Um, that also hurts power, but it does make it um, idle smoother and pull more vacuum. Now these lifts right here are 540, and I think that's uh, 535, but that's with the 1.5. These are 1.6 ratios on here. And I'm using um, the comp die cast aluminum full roller rockers at one six ratio. And that, that's pretty much the combination. The carburetor that's gonna go on it, it's gonna be an 830 CFM carburetor from CSU. It's the Dino Guys carburetor and that's what they've been running before. You might say, well, it's too big. Well, none of my carburetors are really meant for this type of engine. Um, I thought I'd have a 750 here just to test, but I, I don't. So um, we're using that. It doesn't matter anyway because of, so I could have a carburetor in the car, which brings up the next point. You're like, why do you have the MSD? This is also just for testing because um, the HyperSpark stuff's gonna go on when it's in the car, which is part of the Sniper EFI stuff. But for the testing on the dyno, it's just using MSD. Um, that kind of gives you some of it. Now I am dyno testing at a different place than you saw the 406. And the place I'm gonna dyno test is Dungeon Machine in Enid. I was gonna do it in this other, two other places. The place where I had the 406 dyno, I was gonna go there, but and this is not a, nothing against him. Really, I needed to go visit my mother. My mother lives in Enid, Oklahoma. I haven't seen her in months, and I'm uh, being a bad son. Well, the dyno that I can do this at, and I've used him way, he was the first dyno I'd used. It's in Enid, Oklahoma. So it's it's easier for me to go dyno this. Hopefully nothing goes wrong, get done, and I can visit with my mom for a few hours, um, you know, try to be a better son. So there's that part of it. The other part of it is this too. On the return trip, I can stop by the place where the 406 engine is because the customer picked it up and he took it home. Well, it's two and a half hours away from me, but it's closer to where this dyno is. So idea is dyno this, go see my mother, and then try to go check out that engine to make sure maybe the degree on the camshaft, because I want to look at that one more time, make sure I didn't mess that up. Hopefully, I, actually, I hope that that's what the issue is, because then that is an easy fix, and then we can put it back on the dyno and maybe find some of that lost torque, or maybe even gain some more power. But... The, anyway, the dyno that I'm going to, it's a Superflow 902. His dyno, of all the dynos I've ever used, is the tightest one. So if, this one will probably make more power on most of the other dynos that I've been on, but not his. His really is very conservative. And the way he does things, I really like the way he tests. Because what he'll do, and I can already tell you, he's going to bring this up to where, if you'll see on the dyno screen, he's going to bring it up to it reads about 160 on oil temperature and 160 on water temperature before he ever makes a pull. And then he always brings them back to that same point. Now, by the way, that's kind of warm um, if you're trying for peak power. But in all fairness, in a car, this thing's probably going to be about that temperature. So he's really bet good about keeping the test more consistent. His dyno headers, I'll go ahead and tell you, are not the same that we'll be running in the car. He's going to have one and three quarter inch headers. And they are like sprint car headers. So they're a long tube and they've got a long collector. And they work fine for this. It's going to probably skew the numbers from what's actually going to be in the vehicle. Because I think we're going to end up running one and five eighths. Um, just because of size stuff. But regardless, all I really don't care what a power it makes. And if you're asking what I'm hoping for, I'm just hoping for 400 and 400. I'm wanting 400 foot pounds of torque and 400 horsepower. It may not even make that. The thing is really is a pooch. Um, I, I wanna see that, but it may not. You guys can take guesses in the comments what you think it'll make. Um, I, I, 
This one I really don't care. I'm really just trying to see that the engine is healthy and it doesn't leak. That's really it. Whatever power it makes, makes. She doesn't care, and honestly, I don't care. She never even gets, you know, race the thing, so it's whatever. Um, so that's what's going to happen. We're going to do it on 91 octane. The plan will go for this, by the way. Because it's hypertetic piston, they're probably going to start the timing at, this mark's all dirty and stuff. I'm probably going to start the timing at 30, 32, and I will never go beyond 34, even if it's still making power, just because I'm not even going to bother. I'm not trying to hurt the engine. So that's the plan. We'll get to see what happens. I'll get to report the results. Hopefully everything goes fine and no issues. Hopefully it doesn't leak oil. Um, that that's really is the plan. And it's probably, by the way, I don't, I'm not gonna pull it past 6,200 RPM. There's no point for this. She'll never do that either. And I honestly, none of the parts should make power or pass that anyway. So we'll see. Um, I'm gonna guess it's probably gonna make peak power like 58, maybe six, somewhere in that range. Um, but we'll see. You're more than welcome to take a guess on this deal. Um, but that's where it's at. The dyno, this one's really tight. So like I say, it, whatever it reads, it will read that will show. So anyway, feel free to make a guess and I will let you know the results on this on Thursday and whatever it does, even if it's a turd and torque and horsepower, I won't be doing a video about how bad it is because it doesn't even have to perform at all. It just has to not leak and run right. That's it. So as far as engine goes, this is the easiest one to set a standard for. Um, if you have any questions or anything, put them in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer when I have five seconds of time. All right, you guys take care.